So we have one more speaker be before the coffee break. And uh, Maria van der Maade from the European Central Bank will speak about the risk management for managing art archives, authenticity, and cultural memory. Okay, good afternoon. Stand here. And a warm welcome to this presentation on risk management for managing art archives, authenticity, and cultural memory, a slightly different topic. My aim is to inform you and to inspire you on this topic of managing the risk faced by your potentially valuable collection. So to begin with an overview. Firstly, what is a special collection? And what are the risks? Next, what is authenticity? And why does it matter? Then we look at managing risk and where are we? And where do we want to be? Finally, at the end, the, I hope, is some time for questions. So, what is a special collection? Well, it may include banknotes, coins, counterfeits, scientific instruments, if you're working with patents, or perhaps even banknotes, artworks, architectural models, if you're building a new building and you have a competition, donated items, rare books, and much more. I mean, perhaps even a gift from the queen when she comes to visit. As the value of high quality items in a special collection generally increases, the organization faces increased accountability to the public and cultural memory, and possibly higher risk. Thus, items must be managed responsibly. So, to give you a bit of background, a brief look at recent auction results shows a Basquiat purchased at $19,000 in 1984, sold at $110 million this year. De Kooning sold at $66 million, Klimt at $59 million, and the still actively painting painter Gerhard Richter, his abstractist build sold at 30 million pounds in London very recently. So such high sums indicate the need to apply risk management to support best practices and accountability. Now the first step in risk management is to plan, and this involves knowing which factors play a role. Amongst these are accountability, corporate social responsibility, and cultural memory. So it's necessary to assess which regulations play a role and which archival documents are required. Now, how can it be ensured that the items are authentic? You might think, I bought this painting in a gallery, it's got to be authentic. And how can risk management help to ensure compliance with regulations and to promote a positive corporate image. Well, one of the highest risks involves, obviously, fakes and counterfeits, both for paintings and for archival documents. So, what are the risks? A key problem is the inability to certify ownership or missing documents. Information cannot be provided on request. And items may be subject to cultural heritage. And you may ask, have our responsibilities been fulfilled? Now, because of forgeries, which if you're not familiar with this market of collectibles, there have been vast increases in the recent years. And a lot of the things have landed in museums. So we may ask, what authenticity is, and how can we ensure authenticity? Now, there are several definitions of authenticity. The first definition of authenticity is from a <coughs> cultural heritage perspective. It states that the nominated resource should be truly what it is claimed to be. It draws on the following criteria. The resource should have the quality of human creativity, verification, 
that it is a legitimate example of the cultural tradition and an interchange of values must have taken place. The second definition of authenticity is from an arts perspective. Now, according to Walter Benjamin, something that cannot be reproduced is authentic. To Clement Greenberg, the authentic stands in opposition to the mass product, kitsch, and Adorno viewed the artwork as inauthentic. So there's much discussion in this area. Now, moving from these more philosophical approaches to a more practical approach, the collector faces the dilemma of how to authenticate an artwork, especially, for example, if it's not signed. And even a signature doesn't mean that it's authentic, necessarily. So there are many complex issues around authentication. For example, in some countries, the heirs of the artist may authenticate the artworks, for example, in France with Picasso. Yet if you have various heirs and they give conflicting opinions, then you certainly will be facing some cases of litigation. The provenance and the catalogue raisonné play a significant role in authentication here from this perspective. But the third... Okay, I'm, I assume that you're aware, being mainly in archives, of the third definition of authenticity, and it is that indicating a record is what it claims to be. So it has to, be it has to have integrity and must be trustworthy. Now, the fourth definition is from a legal perspective, and it draws on various aspects of the law, such as the arts and cultural affairs laws, the Design and Patents Act, intellectual property rights, etc., depending partially on the local law that applies. So there won't be one European law that we can all share in the sense at the moment. Note that it may not be possible to claim that your artwork is authentic even if you have a certificate from an expert, because experts may not be liable for misattribution. And if an artist is, uh, a painting of an artist is excluded from the catalogue raisonné, you may make yourself liable for damages if you're in charge of this catalogue raisonné. For example, Agnes Martin, a painting was not included and the owner claimed $7 million damage. So court orders may also request records as evidence here in the legal, from the legal, legal aspect. However, determining the authenticity of the artwork may not be the end of the question of the artwork's value. So an artwork may be authentic but may still be a forgery. That is, it will be worthless for your institution. And reports by experts are not necessarily more than an opinion and have led to litigations, especially when authenticity is declined or where the expert made a false attribution. So now you may rightly ask, do I have a collection of forgeries or do I have a fortune? So considering the high sums we saw at the start, it makes a big difference. The key issue is that authenticity is supported by the contract, a valid set of archive documents, due diligence, provenance, catalogues, books, transparency on uncertainty, and that an art archive exists and the information is accessible. Now, knowing that authenticity is supported by an art archive, we should ensure that the archival material is available. So let's look at identifying the risks. Generally, an increasing value of prized artworks and a high financial value of the archive documents related to the artist or collective item suggest that they may require extensive protection. Consider whether you have all the documents 
required for compliance with legislation? Are you taking the appropriate measures for conservation? And think about the increase in forgeries on the market. And could this imply that you should perhaps go back and do some retroactive checks? So you might ask again, what is risk management? Well, risk management is the identification, <laughs> analysis, assessment, control, and avoidance, minimization, or elimination of unacceptable risks. And risk management involves assessing the probabil probability, consequences, and the uncertainties of the risk occurring. Now, this definition suggests that there is something we can do about managing these risks. And if you think about one of the big banks, like maybe, I'll just take Deutsche Bank, with 50,000 artworks, you can imagine what kind of financial sums we're speaking about. Or if you think about the Giacometti sculpture, which was recently sold for $80 million to save a bank in financial crisis, these uh, considerations for risk management are quite significant. So, for example, can we reduce risk by ensuring authenticity in that we need to establish an art archive? And some best practices are apparent in, example, uh, in examples of Paul Klee archive and the Gerhard Richter archives. Um, for example, the archive of the Centrum Paul Klee comprises both of a collection of original documents as well as extensive scientific documentation. It is a collection and uh, it enables research and information for amateurs and experts. The Gerhard Richter archive also includes all the books that Gerhard Richter, well, that include his work in some other context, not only about him, but also of the context. So another important positive implication of such an archive is in terms of cultural memory. Um, many significant researchers have produced profound works that drew on Paul Klee's notes. For example, these researchers have included Martin Heidegger, Boulet, the composer, and Gilles Deleuze, and of course, the very valuable Walt Benjamin. So in order to take the necessary measures to care for the collection and its archive, a risk management plan should be developed. Now it includes risk identification, prioritizing risk based on the impact, assessing the likelihood and the probability of the risk occurring. Then you need to perform qualitative and quantitative analysis and monitor for signs of risk occurrence. Take timely corrective action here and also control your risk. Define response plans and define roles and responsibilities and allocate these to specific staff members. <coughs> and last but not least, perform risk audits regularly. Now it's also useful to carry out a gap analysis to see where you are and where you want to be. So you will be asking, where are we? And where do we want to be? And you want to carry out a situational analysis here and then check whether you actually have managed these risks. Assess which collections you have. You may have a lot of varied types of items in your, in your institution that you first have to discover, and then find out how they are managed, develop policies and standards, and look at your legal compliance. And then you should prioritize the risk, define the pros and cons, and perform a cost-benefit analysis before taking your decision. Of course, you want to update your strategy then, and to make sure that you <coughs> are fit for the future. So, Effective risk management has the benefit of supporting the increase in value of the collection and its archive. It demonstrates accountability 
and supports preservation of cultural memory. Now, research has shown that in artworks and their related documentation, these generally increase in financial and cultural value. So effective risk management demonstrates that the collection is managed responsibly and, very important nowadays, it indicates corporate social responsibility. It ensures that you are prepared in case of problems and you have a risk owner. You have roles and responsibilities defined. You have a list of actions you can take to mitigate these risks and you have for your collection improved security, protection, and preservation of the items. So, in conclusion, I hope that this overview will help you to move into a much less and much much less risky and much better prepared future for your collection. So maybe we have time for questions. Yeah, I think there is some digital art, and of course, besides the artworks, we also have banknotes, counterfeits, and coins. So the question is, you know, you have to consider, do you have everything photographed? Do you have, and in which way do you have it photographed? Do you have high resolution? Do you have every side of the object, top, bottom? Do you have the weight recorded? Uh, have you, have you got a list and a, a list of criteria by which to identify this object compared to five other copies, which might be even so perfect you couldn't distinguish? Um, yeah, and then probably you're looking at digital asset management. You'll have your videos as well. You have photographs, films. I mean, it's endless nowadays. Every media could be used. Um, one interesting case is probably also Dan Flavin. He's it's an artist uh, who works with light bulbs, which you can buy in any general shop where you can buy these kind of household goodies. And he installs different kinds of light in different patterns. So theoretically, anybody can copy this. And you know what makes this a flavin and what makes that just a normal light bulb? And why would you pay 20 million for this and 10 euros for that? So OK, this is where your contract comes into, the, into play. So if I look at your faces, you are prepared for the coffee break. So we meet here again at 3.15. Uh, 3